Psalm 101, and once you have found it, let's all stand as we read the Word of God this morning, Psalm 101. We're going to read the whole chapter, <coughs> Psalm 101, we're going to read the whole chapter, verses 1 through 8, and if you have it, give me a good strong amen. amen. Scripture says in verse 1, I will sing of mercy and judgment, unto thee, O Lord, will I sing, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person who so privately slandereth his neighbor. Him will I cut off. Him that hath an high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. Mine eye shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all the wicked doers from the city of the Lord. I want you to notice verse 1. That's my text verse this morning. The psalmist said, and this, it's a strange little, a little, little statement here. He says, I will sing of mercy and judgment. That's kind of a strange. Why would you sing of judgment? I want to talk about that little phrase this morning. I want to talk to you this morning on the subject, keeping a joyful heart. Keeping a joyful heart. Father, take these next few minutes and Lord, allow me to be a help to the people who've come this morning. Thank you for the host of visitors. Thank you for the full house, Lord, and thank you for all that you've done. Lord, I pray that this morning, Lord, as I talk to your people, may you give to them what you gave to me when I was studying this passage of scripture. There's someone here this morning that's not saved. I pray that they'd come to know you as their personal savior before they leave this place. Maybe someone just needs to get right with you today. I pray that they would do that. Maybe somebody needs to be encouraged and encourage them. Lord, whatever the need is, would you use me as your mouthpiece to help your people, please? In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We live in a very unhappy world. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. All you have to do is drive down the road in rush hour. Somebody say amen. And maybe you're the one. I have no idea. So if you are, do not raise your hand right now. But you know how it is. You're driving down the road rush hour. And somebody, de- um, kind of, you kind of had to slam on your brakes a little bit. And somebody decides to show you their IQ. You'll figure that one out later on. It's just one of those things that we, that we deal with we deal, we deal in an angry world. You turn on television. We live in a very unhappy world. You go look at Washington, D.C. Thank God we don't live in Washington, D.C. Somebody can say amen right there. I mean, they can't get along with themselves, much less each other. I mean, just an unhappy world. You can go down the streets and, you know, you, 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 you watch the news every night and you hear about the shootings and the fightings in the, in the city and you say it's an unhappy world. You go to the homes and sadly a lot of the homes are very unhappy. Sometimes some of those who ride the buses to church, the only joy that they get in life is when they come to church because home is a war zone. Home is a place where mom and dad are fighting each other and it's just unhappy and the children just don't want to be there. It's just an unhappy world. And yet I, I want to, I, 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 I truly do, I, I like to enjoy life. I like to cut up. I like to joke. And I know y'all don't think I do that at all, but, but I, I really do. I was, I was out this week talking to someone, and they, said, they made a statement to me and Brother Means, and I don't understand Brother Means, I understand me, but they said, you all are always happy, you're laughing, you're joyful. And I thought, is this the same Brother Means that I know? But anyway, but it was, it was a, he says, you're always happy, you're always joyful. And I want to be that way. And I have a reason to be that way. You see, 
They, the world looks at us, and they, they, think, they think this. They think, you, you, oh, you're all happy. You don't have any problems. Oh, no, we got problems. You don't believe me? Look at the person next to you. But anyway, anyway, we all have problems. But in the midst of our problems, you can still have joy. In the midst of the hardships, you can still have joy. When you're sitting in the hospital room, you can still have joy. There's nothing like going to a hospital room of, of a saint who's about ready to pass into heaven and people begin to sing as they, and the songs and the nurses hear the singing of the, of the, of the hymns of the faith and the, and the nurses know that's a Christian family in there. Years ago when I used to work for the coroner, and I'd go to pick up a dead body. You could always tell the difference, Miss Lynn, between the saved and the lost. I, I mean, we'd, we'd take the bodies out, roll them out in the gurney, and we'd cover them up. But then as we'd roll them out, if it was a lost family, I can tell you, time after time, they would just try to grab that, fam, that family member, begin to weep because they knew they'd never see them again. But then I remember one home I went to. An older man. We walked inside. The friend and I walked inside to go pick up his wife. She had passed away at the house. And we said to the older gentleman, we said, we're sorry. We have to meet you this way. He says, it's okay. He says, she's in heaven right now. He says, she's doing better off right now. He says, and it won't be long that I'll be joining her someday too. He says, and we will, it's going to be okay. He says, I know. He says, you all think this is a sad time. He said, she's healed right now. And you can always tell there was just that joy in the heart. Because something was different on the inside. The psalmist said, I will sing of mercy and judgment. We sing that song. You ever heard the song? I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free for his eye is on the sparrow. Eat your heart out, Brother Turk. <laughs> yeah, we sing because we're happy. You ever? I don't, who's a whistler in here? Who likes to whistle? Anybody in here like to whistle? I'm a whistler. I like to whistle. And, I, and I'll just, I, I, don't even, I don't even know I'm whistling at times. I just start whistling. I was in a hotel room, and I was just going, I was just walking out, just whistling. And someone said, well, you're happy today. And I said, why is that? They said, you're whistling. I said, I am. They said, don't you listen to yourself? I said, no. I, I ought to, most intelligent guy I know. But anyway, but you know what I'm talking about. I mean, I mean, I said, no, no, no. I, I don't, I don't, I mean, no, I didn't. And it's just one of those things. I like the whistle. I like to sing. And you can know, of course, the favorite place to sing is in the shower. Why? Because I'm a great singer inside the shower. Nobody can hear me. It is great. And Brother Heidenreich, you better not say a thing right there because you can't even sing in the shower. The water stops running when you start singing. But anyway, <coughs> but you got to understand, we sing because we're happy. You know, when I, I love the congregational song when Brother Tremble gets up and we begin to sing and you see the smile. I was watching that last, the, one of the songs we sang today and, 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 and people were getting happy because we're singing some happy songs. I tell the song people around here, and those who sing the specials, I say, I, I don't want those songs that are melancholy songs. You know what I'm talking about? I want songs that are happy. I want songs that remind people of heaven. I want people to come to church and say, wow, what a great place. Wow, what a happy people. What a joyful people. It ought to be that way. Amen. A joyful place, a joyful heart. The psalmist said, I'll sing. He said, I'll sing of mercy and judgment. And then he says, unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. He's showing uh, you and I, when you begin to read through the psalm, you find there's eight ways, eight things you have to do if you want to have a joyful heart. You say, Brother Dominic, but you don't understand, I'm married to a grouch. I'm sorry, Mrs. Foster. I'm married to a grouch. Listen to me. You can still have a joyful heart. Let me, show you, let me show you how to have a joyful heart. Number one, protect your ways. Protect your ways. Look at verse two. He says, I will behave myself wisely in a what? 
perfect way. You know, when the psalmist said in a perfect way, you know, the way there are ways that are not happy and there are ways that are, are happy. Listen to me very carefully. The way of the Lord is always a happy way. May I tell you, you want to get happy. You want to get the joy inside your heart. If you're not saved this morning, you let Christ become your Savior. You can find some joy you've never had before because you got the joy maker that moves inside. And I'm telling you right now, hey, if you're not saved, you say, how come, how come you're all so happy? I, don't, I can't find that joy. Tell you why. Because the source of joy doesn't live inside of you. But let me tell you something. You can be as happy as Brother Williams is and you can say, boy, I'm always on a joyful side. Why? Because I've got a Savior living inside my heart. Hey, you know what? I know I'm on my way to heaven. You know why I got the Savior living inside? I'm going to heaven. I'm going to walk on streets of gold. I've got a mansion that's being built for me right now. But I can't wait to see that mansion. Now, I'm not looking for the next bus ride, but I'm telling you, I can't wait to see the mansion in heaven. There's a reason to be happy. There's a reason to have a smile on your face. There's a reason to have joy. When the world is angry and when the world's unhappy, the Christian can say, I have a joy. Why? Because I've chosen the way of salvation. You know, the way that you live will determine your happiness. Can I just be a little blunt with some of you? The way of the gang life doesn't bring happiness. Somebody help me out just a little bit. The way of alcohol doesn't bring happiness. Somebody help me out. The way of drugs doesn't bring happiness. The way of the world doesn't bring happiness. You say, oh, I just need some joy. You're not going to find it in the bottle. I'll go a step further. You're not going to find it in the casino. Come on now. You know what you're going to find in the casino? You're going to find you're broke when you walk out. Come on now. Well, I'm going to get rich one day. Problem is they just keep on taking your money while you're going. Come on now. You see, the way, the way is very important. I've chosen the Christian way. I've chosen the Christian life. I said I want to get saved, and the joy came inside. The way of living in the in a self, the way of selflessness. Listen to me, not living for myself, trying to live to help others. There's a joy in that, Brother Stafford. Oh, when I can when I can live to try to make others happy, when I can call them up and say, "Hey, just praying for you." When I text somebody, I just want to let them know. And and oftentimes you'll get a text from your pastor, "Hey, hey, just praying for you." Why? Because I because I want to make somebody happy. I know every hey, we're all having a tough time at times. Can I tell you? You want to have a heart filled with joy. You better watch the ways that you live. There's a second thing that you got to protect. You got to protect your heart. Protect your heart. Verse 2 says, I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. The heart is the seat of affections. Can I talk to teenagers just a little bit? Teenagers, listen to me. That hunk of a guy. That beauty of a girl is not going to make you happy to lose your purity. Because that hunk of a guy is probably a jerk that once he gets you pregnant, he's going to leave you. Because many a guy, many a male, I won't even call him a man, many a male will get a young girl pregnant and run off. And you're left to raise a child by yourself. Let me tell you something. That's not the way of joy. Not the way of joy. You better protect your heart. You better protect the affections that are going on. What, 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 what are your affections placed on? Can I go a step further and just say this? Putting your affections on money and houses and cars won't bring you joy either. Listen, I, brother, brother, brother Brown, brother Jacob, and I. Yesterday, we were we were out soul winning yesterday, and we went down the street with some pretty nice homes, very nice homes. They had the pillars out front. I mean, nice 
home. Probably six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollar homes. You know, and I look, you look at those houses and they look extravagant. But I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of people that live in those homes. Their heart is broken. Their life is in turmoil because that home doesn't bring them joy. I'm not against big homes. I'm not against nice cars. I'm not against that at all. But if you think that's where you're going to find joy, you'll never find joy in that. You've got to understand that at some point you've got to move beyond the temporal. You know where joy comes in? I'll tell you where joy comes in. Is yesterday I knocked on the wrong door. Somebody gave me a bad address. I won't say their name, Evelyn. <laughs> knocked on the wrong door and the guy says, no, they're not here. They're across the street. He ended up talking to the gentleman for a while, and he, before long, he bowed his head, prayed, received Christ as his Savior. Amen. I mean, I was, I was happy. I was, I, was, I was joyful. Man, we were, we were pumped up. I was glad that Evelyn gave me the wrong address. Sorry, Evelyn, I keep, I keep on pointing you out. <coughs> Fourth row, back. Anyway, you ever want to see a Mexican blush right now? But anyway, listen to me. Listen to me. There, there's something about it. There was something about it because it was out. It was outside of me. It was not me. It was not a car. It was. It didn't matter if I drove up in a moped. The guy got saved. Do you understand? Protect your ways. Protect your heart. Listen. Be careful. Set your affection on things above. Why? That's where joy comes from. There's a third thing you got to protect. You got to protect your eyes. Protect your eyes. Look at verse 3. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Oh, listen to me. Men, I want you to listen very carefully. That porn sight will not bring joy. Did you hear me? Listen to me very carefully. If we're not careful, if we're not careful, we start looking on the wrong things and you look on the wrong things and it brings turmoil on the inside you watch the wrong program turmoil on the wrongs on the inside listen to me you can't you can't see the wrong things listen to me you better protect what your eyes see it's the portal to your soul many a person and I can't even go a step further to the younger generation. These violent filled games is not going to give you joy. Well, how come I can't find joy? Do you know what you're watching? Look at the games. They're violent. And you wonder why you're so violent. You're, you're lashing out when mom and dad say, turn it off. Why do I have to turn it off? Come on now. You can't, listen, you better be careful what you watch. Some of you, on the inside, you're, not, you're getting eaten up with unhappiness on the inside because you keep on watching the wrong things and you say, I can't, I, but, but I'm trying to satisfy, me. that won't satisfy you. Hey, listen to me, that will never satisfy We have such access to things that can pollute the mind. I was preaching a sermon on pornography years ago, a few years ago, and had to a teenage crowd and gave an invitation, and boys began to come forward. One of the men who was taking, who was, who was dealing with each boy, we dealt with each boy as an individual, and he would ask the boys, when was the first time you saw a wrong picture? Brother Williams, the average age was between 8 to 10 years of age. We wonder why our teenage boys are so hooked. And daddy, don't think your children don't watch what you're doing. 
And I'm talking to some of you, you, you've struggled with it for a while. And it's not giving you the joy. Why do you keep on going back to it? Protect your eyes. Something else you need to protect. You need to protect your associations. Protect your associations. Look at verse 3. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Listen to me. Your associations will affect whether you have a joyful heart or not. Listen to me. You cannot hang around Eeyore and be on top side every day. Somebody help me out. Say, who's Eeyore? He's that, he's that famous Bible character that's negative all the time. He says, is he really in the Bible? No, just seeing if you're reading your Bible. <laughs> Brother Jim said, really? I didn't know that. But anyway. <laughs> you know, you can't be around negative people and be on top side. I guard my time around people who are negative. I, I try to get away from them as quick as I can. You say, why? Because I don't want them to affect my spirit. Can I help you out? You don't have to respond to negative people. Don't feed their negativity. Because you can't live on a joy. Listen, in the home, can I tell you something in the home? Don't talk about people in a bad way. You got to protect your associations, your worldly associations. Hey, listen. You can't hang around worldly people and have a joyful heart. Because why? Worldly people do worldly things. And worldly things are normally sinful things. Somebody help me out. You say, how do I keep my heart? How do I keep my heart filled with joy? Protect your ways. How do I protect? How to protect? How to have a heart of joy? Protect your heart. Protect your eyes. Protect your associations. Can I go a step further? Protect your tongue. Your tongue. Look at verse 5. Who shall privately slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Here we go. You ready? You can't talk bad about others and expect to have a peaceful life. I want you to listen very carefully. <clears throat> you say, but nobody knows what I said. Oh, the birdie's going to tell somebody. And when somebody says, I'll never tell anybody, don't trust them. Listen, how do you expect to have a happy marriage when husbands and wives are, your tongue is like a sword killing each other? Come on now. Can I help you out? You're not at war. You're married. The, the, your marriage song was not, the fight is on. But no, that's not your marriage song. Come on. You know, the one we ought to, we ought to talk the kindest to ought to be our spouse. You say, well, they know, they know I'm having a bad day. That's still no excuse. You can control your tongue. You don't have to say those things. You don't have to talk in a disrespectful manner. Your tongue does cause a lot of problems in relationships. I'm talking parent, children. Listen to me. Mom and dad, and they, they, start, they start fighting with the kids and they start saying bad things. Hey, watch your tongue. Watch what you say about your boss. That's a good way to have a bad day. <clears throat> For the one who, hears, who pays you your paycheck hears that you've been talking bad about him, you're fired. Listen to me. Do you understand your tongue? Can, you can get yourself in trouble with your tongue. Well, I'm just going to give him a piece of my mind. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. You won't have anything left. Not a, big, not a big mind anyway, but anyway. Because little, let me, let me help you out, little minds try to tear down people. Great minds talk about ideas. 
and you can talk and slander and hit and cut and slice and dice and then you say, well, how come they don't love me? Well, put yourself in their shoes. I tell people all the time, do not settle arguments in texting. You all heard me say that time and time again. Because people cannot read your emotions in the text. What you don't, what you think is not that bad, the other person on the other side is trying to think, what does that mean? Especially when you're texting it to an older person and you put L-O-L on the end, they're thinking, what is lol? <laughs> is that right, Brother Stafford? They don't know what all those things are. You know, you're texting an older, you know, they're, they're 80 years of age and you're texting them. They don't even know, you know, what, what are they talking in? What language is this? And just because you put LOL on the end doesn't take away the sword that came before the LOL. Because sometimes we say in jest what we really mean in the heart. And you better be careful. You say, I want to have a joyful heart. Let me tell you something. Best way to take joy out of the heart, oh, let your tongue just run. Because then when you have to pick up all the pieces that your tongue has cut up. You know, it's like gossip. You ever seen a feathered pillow? I'm not going to do it in here. I saw a pastor one time take a feather pillow and Start throwing the feathers around. You, you can never pick up every feather. He preached a sermon on that, on the feather. He had a feather. We were picking up feathers in that auditorium for weeks. You can't pick it all up. That's why you better be careful what you say on social media. Listen to me. Stop using social media to vent. And you, instead, use it to try to encourage others. Well, I just got to, I got to let it out. No, you don't. Listen, at some point, you got to protect what you say. Protect your tongue. You want a joyful heart? Protect your tongue. May I say this? Hey, you want a joyful heart? Protect your spirit. Protect your spirit. Verse 6 says, Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. Listen to me. You can't expect to have a spirit on top side when you're watching and listening to the negative all day. Can I tell you this? Watch your spirit. Watch what you watch on the news. Uh, listen, I've turned the news off a long time ago. It is so negative. I don't want to hear the left. I don't want to hear the right. I just don't want to hear it. Come on now. You can't feed yourself that and keep your spirit up. Keep your eyes on faithfulness. May I say, number seven, protect your decisions. Protect your decisions. Bad decisions can turn some joy around real fast to make it a miserable day and a miserable life. You're one decision away from making a bad decision. You better watch your decisions. Before you start making lifelong decisions, you might ought to talk to somebody and say, what do you think? Can I just get your mind on this? God says there's safety in the multitude of counselors. Doesn't mean the counselor is going to be is God. It's just saying, I need another mind that doesn't have feeling involved in it. Number eight, protect your personal altar. Look at verse eight. I will what? Early do what? Destroy all the wicked of the land. That I may cut off all the wicked doers from the city of the Lord. You know what? The, you know what is the best time to take care of sin? Immediately. Sin takes joy, boom, like that. The longer you allow sin in your life, the deeper its roots grow, the harder it is to pull out. You, want to, you don't want to know why we give an invitation call every service? Because I want a place where people can come every service. So I did something this week. I, I need to get it right. I need to get it right. I know you can do it at your house. Sometimes you just need to come forward and have a place at the altar that you get it right, that you can point to. 
So I got it right there. You let it hang on for too long. And the joy's gone. But hold on. Let's go back to verse 1. He said, I will sing of mercy and judgment. So his song came from mercy and judgment, did it not? So see, all these other ways that we just talked about, the eight ways, that's a result of verse 1. What's verse 1? Follow me very carefully. He said, I will sing of mercy. What's mercy? Mercy is, not, is God not giving us what we deserve. What is judgment? Judgment is God being our judgment for sins. You know why he said I was seeing a mercy and judgment? He says God was merciful to me. I was headed to hell. I was the one who should have been in hell. But Jesus Christ was the one who took my judgment for me. He's the one who made the payment of sin for me. He says I'm going to heaven. Why? Because my judgment has been paid for. You may be here this morning. And you say, preacher, I don't even know that I'm saved. This is the day to get it settled. This is the day. God didn't bring you here by accident. You hear in a church that Wants you to get saved. You have a God in heaven who wants you to be saved. I talk to people all the time. So I got baptized. Baptism doesn't save you. Somebody had to die. Christ died. Christ took our judgment. Christ became the sacrificial lamb for you and I. He suffered what you and I should have suffered. That's why we can sing of judgment. We sang yesterday in the soul winning time at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. I go to that cross. I find joy was found at the cross, Brother Hyden, right? I was a sinner headed on my way to hell. I didn't have a Savior. And I said to my mama, Mama, I want to go to heaven one day. My mom said, Son, why don't you sit down? Let me show you something. She sat me down on the couch. She opened the scripture. She showed me I was a sinner and my sins had condemned me to hell. But that there was a Savior who died for me. His name was Jesus Christ. He was the Son of God. She said, Son, He paid for every one of your sins. He was buried and He rose again and He offers it to you as a free gift. She said, Son, if you want it to be yours, all you got to do is call on him. He'll save you. That night as a young boy, I knelt down beside my couch that night. And I asked Jesus Christ to be my personal Savior. And from that night until today, I've always had a reason to have joy. Because Christ is in our heart. If you've ever been to the bedside of a dying saint, there's something about it. The peace. The joy. Let me ask you something. What's your life like this week? Do you find your life lacking a lot of joy? And I advise you to follow these eight ways and plug them into your life, but if you're not saved, I advise you to ask Christ to be your personal Savior. Father, 
Thank you for a psalm that can remind us, that can show us how to have a joyful heart. Oh, I want people to walk inside of this church, Maranatha Baptist Church. And I want them to see a church that is joyful. Not because of who we are, but because of who you are, who lives inside of us. Heads are bowed.